Okay. So thanks everyone for coming along. Um, thanks to Michaela, Michaela and Julia for agreeing to do the interview. It's um, it's really cool for us to get a bit of an insight into how the competitions went at Jaywalk. Um, I think a lot of us were watching, um, but it's it's always good to get the the inside knowledge. So we might start just by asking a couple of questions and then we might get you to go through a couple of the races. Um, so firstly, you can answer in any order, but I was just um, I was just interested to know how, like to start with, the first thing that comes into your mind in regards to Jaywalk, how, how did you, like what was the, the biggest takeaway from Jaywalk for the three of you? Um, maybe I'll go. So obviously Jaywalk wasn't what we thought it would be with Forest events being cancelled. And I think maybe what I took away is something that Warren said. He said that we kind of put Walk and Jaywalk on a pedestal and it's like everyone comes, like everyone's like, oh my God, you made Jaywalk. Oh my God, you made Walk. Like obviously it's a great thing to do, but there are other um, like events that we're going to in Europe that will be like just as fun, just as amazing. So like while we missed out on all the forest events in Jaywalk, like I'm fortunate enough to be going to Oringen and going to World Unis and going to EOC. So like while Jaywalk yeah. is an amazing achievement, um, all of the other events in Europe that you can go to without making a team like uh, Oringen and stuff like that is also just as awesome and like just as an experience as well. So I think that's really good as well for other people who didn't quite make teams they can still come over and get an awesome experience or engineering wise and like socially as well mm -hmm. definitely yeah no, it's cool it's a good I think that's a, a good way of looking at it um yeah obviously quite tough for you guys but um yeah there's lots of opportunities coming up what about you yeah. Michaela whoever wants to go next <laughs> yeah I think that going into Jaywalk it was like really um scary I think I kind of put I was like right this is it this is my last year like I've missed out on a fair bit we've got to like go hard and then we kind of got there and it was a bit disappointing but I think that they put together a really cool program for us and um they made the most of it and at the end of the day I wouldn't have wanted to be out in the in the heat anyway because it was so so hot but Jaywalk in itself the people the atmosphere it was all there and we had so so much fun yeah, yeah. cool so it's your it was your last year Michaela wasn't it this year is that right yeah, yeah. so mine yeah. really is I think there were seven of us with our last year oh really wow wow yeah, okay. so it was pretty, there, was a, there were a lot of 20 year olds in the team that were a bit sad yeah with the night we found out it was <laughs> it was a bit chaotic we found out and because one of the New Zealanders came into the room where we were sitting in and he was like oh, it might be cancelled because of the first fires. And we were like, oh, you're pulling out, like, you're, you're yeah. joking. And we, like, adamantly refused. And he kept trying to tell us, and we just adamantly refused. So he just gave up at the end of the time. He was like, oh, whatever, they're not going to believe us. And yeah. then we saw the official notice. Yeah. And all hell broke loose. So we were staying in a hotel with um, the Brits, the Kiwis, Germany. Germany, Ireland, and Hong Kong. And a lot of us just... A lot of people just we went, all went to the pool and there was like probably 40 or 50 people in this pool and it was just a lot of emotions going around and I think the TV having the team there to like bond and like being with each other was pretty was the thing that kind of got us like oh, it's gonna be okay we'll deal with it. <laughs> yeah yeah and I can imagine uh, something like this happening probably means the team bonded more than they probably would have in a standard week. So I guess there's there's always that silver lining there. And I'm sure you guys had a – it looks like you had a great week. So um, yeah. on that, just before we go to Michaela, um, Mary had a question in terms of how, um, how you felt the organisation was, given that they threw everything together last minute. Um, and did you think uh, – did you think that it was as good as what it would have been if they'd been organising that that way for months? It was it was really good. I was so impressed that they like managed to pull it all together like that. 
um, for the sprint relay, they used the same arena as the sprint. Um, so that was obviously all, and that arena was intended to be used for the long as well, because it was kind of like all near the same area. So there was this huge stage and like the, um, and they, they did really well to kind of pull it all together. Um, I think I expected less, but they did really, really well. They had, they managed the screens, the tracking that it felt like a really big race. Like it still felt like jaywalk. What do you reckon, Mickey G? Yeah, it was really impressive. And yeah, they even changed the map slightly between uh, the mm -hmm. sprint and sprint relay, which was two days later on the same map. So they're definitely on top of the game. Yeah, no, I like seeing it from afar. And obviously we, we just see the production they give us. The production was as good. Uh, the courses I thought were probably better in the sprint relay than the sprint. Like I, I wasn't overly impressed by the sprint courses. They were good, but they weren't amazing. But I thought the sprint relay courses were really good. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was quite impressive to watch from afar. And, and it sounds like it felt on the ground very professional still as well. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, Michaela, how about you? I guess this was your first jaywalk and you will still have some more jaywalks in the future. How, how did you feel after the week and what were your main takeaways? Um, yeah, so I'm 18, so I have hopefully two more jaywalks after this one. Um, as the other girls said, obviously, I was quite disappointed about the forest races being cancelled, but I sort of more treated it as... Like, it's not my last year, so I can have a real go at the sprint. And if anything, um, this will kind of help with experiencing the nerves aspect before I actually do force races in the future. Um, so for me, it was like kind of like a soft entry into Jaywalk because I got to do the sprint, which is one of my favorite events, and then do um, one of the other events was unofficial. So all of this was really good um, for me to like experience Jaywalk without the pressure of doing, you know, the, the biggest race, like some of the bigger races. Um, so I think I could like turn it somewhat into a positive, which is really nice. Yeah, cool. What did you feel like the main differences were between, uh, say, competitions you previously done and, and being at Jaywalk your first time? Um, I would say like being tracked and potentially being videoed uh, I did kind of psych myself out before I began. Um, I was quite like nervous about that. I was like, oh, everyone can see what I do. Um, I haven't really had that experience at a major race before, but um, like as ever, as all the coaches tell you, you just got to run it like any other race. It's not that different. Uh, if you start enjoying it, like the atmosphere turns from like pressure to excitement. And I felt that was uh, really good for me. Yeah, cool. Cool. All right. Well, I think you somewhat covered some of the other questions I had as well um, in that. But l let's just maybe talk about your performances uh, and how you felt like you went. So before we get in particular races, did you have any general thoughts on, on your performances in any particular races? Um, yeah, I don't think any of us did our best in the individual. I think that it was all kind of like new and scary. And I mean, I have been to Joe before, but it was quite a long time ago and I'm not really sure if I remember much of it. Um, but, but I think that we definitely, Tash kept saying, if, if you run as good as you do in Australia, you'll do well. And it was kind of like, we went, oh yeah, we get it now because I don't think any of us ran as best as we could in the individual. And then as we started to kind of warm up through the week, we had better and better runs with like the kind of more used to what we got, or maybe it was kind of a relay, so we were less like frazzled about it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we all warmed up um, into them as we went. I think what me definitely personally, I as I went, I got better and better. And I think for the majority, um, as we went along, we did get better. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And what do you think, um, what was your best race? Maybe the three of you, what, what were you most happy about? I think mine was definitely the urban relay, so the only unofficial event. Yeah, mine was, oh, mine was the sprint relay where it says I, where I mispunched. 
but I didn't miss much. I went to what I promised, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I, I miss much that one apparently, but it was like my best kind of race in general. Yeah, for me, it was also the sprint relay. Um, I went in, into it with not much pressure because I was in kind of the unofficial race um, and I was first leg runner, so I could go out with people. I ended up running with about four people the whole time, which was like another good um, like training experience. Uh, and I felt like I had a pretty good run, so I enjoyed, <clears throat> enjoyed that one. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah nice. And it, it sounds like <laughs> yeah. like all three of you warmed up and I, I was sort of thinking the same thing here. Mary's got a, a question um, in terms of uh, what do you think could have helped you prepare to feel warm and ready before that first race rather than sort of warming up through the week? I think because the sprints were so, so different here to anything we've ever experienced before, having like a couple of those on training maps were really good, but I think maybe having just previous kind of like experience in like, I don't know, the competition side of things. And then um, in those specific maps, like doing it with pressure, which we kind of did a little bit yeah, of. We did like a simulation, a simulation sprint with the Kiwis. Um, and so like, it was like the start blocks and you had to start time yeah. and then you went out. And yeah. like Aston was running around filming people to try and, you know, stimulate that, yeah. that kind of thing. But it's a bit different when you know it's fake and you can't put that mm. mental pressure. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So do you think potentially yeah, well, doing... I'm going to be a bit controversial and say that... Sorry, the, you go first. I reckon the first jaywalk race is... Yeah, sorry. I'm going to be a bit mm -hmm. controversial and say that I think the first jaywalk race is always going to be like that. You're always going to have nerves. I don't think there's mm -hmm. like a, a best recipe for avoiding it because I think that everybody realises, wow, I'm on the world stage. This is when I really got to perform. And... Sometimes, sometimes people like respond to that really well, but I think for some of us, um, it just made us like more nervous about the race. So, do you think in do you think it's about first jaywalk or first race of being in Europe? Um, I think if you have like a bit of both. Yeah, yeah. So it's always going to sort of feel like particular. I guess first jaywalk is the first time feeling that, and then. For others that haven't been to jail, it's only once a year. So even even if you were at jail the previous year, it's still been a long time since you've been in that situation. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Mary's pop Mary's pop something in that she's targeting Michaela a little bit here, um, but this is good. It's it's good to sort of discuss it. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you see her question there instead of me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think just looking, being coming from a walk, it was kind of just like, oh, wow, like everywhere, everyone's like all of those like really, really good people. And I'm just kind of like, I kind of like separated myself from one of them. Um, but like then when we got to JWF, I was like, oh, they're all, they're all my age. They're all like two years younger than me. Whereas, um, and I think it's always, yeah, it's always going to be scary. And I was so nervous for walk as well. And I think it's just something that, you like individually have to like learn how to handle yourself rather than yeah rather than um kind of prepare for it in different ways it's kind of like oh I've got to myself know how to prepare for a specific race and I think I'm still learning how to like deal with it yeah yeah and I think yeah what Mary's sort of referring to now is sort of saying yeah. that maybe at walk you felt like you didn't have the pressure because you weren't at the top whereas when you were at jaywalk you were competing against your your peers yeah. I guess and, and you felt more pressure to perform yeah yeah absolutely it was more like all right this is my last shot this is this is it and then it was a really big kill so. <laughs> yeah 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 okay um and one last before we get into the maps what if you ha if you could go back in the last six months and do something differently to prepare, what what would you do uh, to prepare for this jaywalk? More hills. More hills. Yeah, I was going to say that. If I knew it was just the sprint, the hills <laughs> at the end of the course really killed us. Yep. Yep. Oh. And <laughs> Julia, any anything different or also hills? Um. Yeah, maybe if it was just the sprint, I would kind of 
practice looking at the more intricate details on the map because um, on the individual map, there was one entrance to a control that everyone had been looking at on like the same area on the, um, the Google like maps. the Google Maps that we got. And we were like, oh, it's an entrance. And you know, I'd heard that. And then um, in the individual, I made a big mistake because I went in and I didn't, I didn't properly stand and look at my map and I was like, oh, that's an entrance, I can go. But it wasn't, it was uncrossable. Mm. So I lost quite a bit of times. And I think for some other people, just looking at the very intricate details, like there were a lot of like things that would catch you out because it's so small and it's not blocky like in Australia. It's not just mm. big building. Mm nice rows of blocks it's very weirdly shaped buildings so i think yeah being able to look at the intricate details very quickly i guess i could have practiced that yeah so you mean more so being able to see it on the day rather than doing the prep is that what you're saying yeah, sorry sorry yeah what i was saying is like um in the prep everyone was looking at the section and there was a crossable gap so yeah. i guess yeah. when i immediately looked at it i was like oh it's a crossable gap when i didn't properly look at it yeah on the map Just, yeah uh, and stuff like that yeah. yeah, and I think that's probably something that I would, like, I obviously haven't been in Europe yet, but that's something that I've taken away from this season um, in terms of the the way sprint racing is going, at least at the world championship level, is that they're going to use areas that they can open and close things. Um, so sometimes that over-preparation and expecting it to be a certain way might, not always work and 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 like you were saying that you need to still be able to pick it up on the day yeah yeah i think that caught a couple of people out um like thinking things on the map as were as the previous map when they had changed it yeah yeah, yeah. it's a lot of controversy <laughs> a lot of controversy with the first a couple of runners being disqualified and then they're like oh but it wasn't like that on the old map and then yeah, they yeah. underscore them. <laughs> they underscored them. Yeah, like the Why? winner second place of the men's twenties. Yeah, of the boys. Um, yeah, so they were, there was like this kind of like ambiguous and it wasn't kind of taped this out of bounds area, and they ran straight through it. Um, but it was actually olive green on the map, and it was very clearly olive green. Um, it was a big source of controversy because they kind of argued it and they were like, you know, the Scandi countries. So they, they argued it with force. Yeah, um, okay. and yeah. And so they just, they ran through it and it looked from the top, like you could run through it, like it would be yellow, but it was actually olive green and it was very obviously olive green from the bottom. But yeah, they underqualified them because they're like, it was like yeah. that on the old map. Because <laughs> of the, the, I guess the reason that they underqualified them must have, meant that it was it must have been that it wasn't taped yeah it wasn't taped or something like that yeah oh, it okay. was all interesting interesting um all right well maybe yeah i think that's what you were saying here that it was <laughs> the organizers didn't tape it yeah when they said they would yeah Anyway, um, all right, let's uh, have a chat about the actual races. So I've lost my mouse. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Um, let's have a look. Who was going to do the sprint? Was that you, Michaela? Me. Yeah. C. Michaela C. All right, let's share. This is the sprint map for those who haven't seen it. And let's... Get up. Well, do you know what start number you were? Um, I was towards the end. So I'm going to unpick all first. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, here it is. Uh, before or after Julia? After. There you are, right at the end. Okay. Any particular part you would like to look at, or do you want to? Um, I suppose we can go like basically like the, the cool part, which is in the mid, like the middle. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was like, so the whole, the whole ensemble, the whole crazy, it was a different type of thing to what, um, it's like in Australia. So like, I kind of knew what was going on because of 
because of like last time I went to j but with the whole quarantine and all of that, um, it was a big like crazy deal. So we were just doing a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of thinking. But so I knew when I had got that first control, I didn't think it was going to be a long, a long work. But when I got to my map, I was like, I looked at it and went, okay, all right, let's do it. Let's go. And I was really, really focused on looking at my map. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was a that was a bit that was my boo-boo <laughs> um, um and so yeah I was like and when I got the first control I was like yes yes I was running and I was like I'm so glad that I like kind of got it with and it might not have been the fastest way I think the fastest way um that a lot of people went was come across the top and down um somewhere down the like open area and down there um to kind of get into one kind of Sorry, can you guys see my mouse yeah 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 <laughs> so, so starting three, and then through coming, there no coming um, further, 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 up. further north coming kind of oh. almost past like four down that gap through four which is what like a lot oh of yeah through did. that one yeah yeah which is what a lot of people did but i was just yeah i think everyone was kind of like get that first control get it clean get it good and then you can Think. and then I was like oh, perfect Look, this is awesome I'm doing well my legs are fine it's been all downhill let's go and then so I flew to two I was going really fast and then I I just missed that gap I couldn't see it and that's another case that I think doing a little bit more preparation beforehand because um a lot of the boys and a lot of other people were like oh don't do you remember looking at that gap online I was like no I did I don't and so I went in there and then I couldn't see that gap on the way back either and I was like fine I'll just I'll just run and do what I can to like get there and it was after that I was like oh no my my race and I think it took a lot to just kind of keep going after that and keep making those decisions and keep um keep orienteering after going oh I just lost all that time um yeah for sure and a lot of like energy as well just being like oh no yeah um but yeah I think particularly for um controls like this have a using the barrier as like a because the barrier is really obvious using that as like almost a big landmark for like orienteering and for getting your direction was really helpful because that mm. was so big and so there and so coming down from four to five, seeing that barrier and going, oh, yeah, cool. So it was nearly more obvious than the buildings, like, because it was different. Yeah. yeah, it was different. It was different. And because one Did of you the know what it was going to look like in terms of, like, did they have that set up at the technical model and it was the same as what they... We went to the model and I think they hadn't set it up yet. I think it was very hectic for them because they were they were under a lot of pressure to, like, make yeah. the other... But there was, um, it wasn't quite set up all the way the first day and the second day was a little bit set up. But it was obvious in the, like, in the terrain. Yeah, and it was in the bulletin. There was a photo. Yeah, yeah. okay. So it was cool. And I found a lot of, like, kind of going through, like, familiar areas, like, going past, like, places that I've already been as, like, really, like, oh, yes, I'm on the right way. Um, so, like, going from five to six, going all the way around, um, I probably should have come into the yellow down by 11. But it was just areas that I'd already been to and I already knew. So it was yeah. kind of like familiar and then I could run. And then this is where we started to go uphill a little bit more. And so getting a bit tired. And so as I was getting to the yellow, I was like, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. And then when I, I like, popped out um, at the castle wall, I went, Oh, but it was like one of those things where because this big wall um, was like a huge castle wall and it was very obvious um, to see and like relocated off. So it, that was like a little error, but it was easily fixable. Yeah. And um, so I was running with a Danish girl like at this point and she went all the way around the bottom to nine rather than crossing the bare rock. And I was like a lot faster because of able to cross the bare rock. And it was just things like that, which were like, oh, yeah, little like affirmations, like, okay, you're doing okay. 
you're doing okay. But this is definitely when the tired legs were starting to like sit in going up and down the hill, but it was still pretty good. And there was a lot of people who went um, from 11 to 12 went down because it looked like you could possibly get through like in there, yeah. but it was just all like, it was all big no-nos. <laughs> And that was that was open the next day, yeah. Yeah, so that's actually what I was referring to. That's before, the one, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was quite tricky. I saw that it was. I saw someone go through it the next day because I think I saw your mistake, Julia. And then yeah. the next day, when I was watching, I saw someone go straight through it, and I was like, "What the hell? That's they can't go through there." And then they actually could. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So there's a lot of people kind of getting a bit confused in there which was so true because I stopped looking at my and went. It looks really tight and hard. Like the route choices maybe at, at times in this course don't look too tricky. Like most of them, like there's like a way through, but like I imagine like the actual execution of the the route choices and making sure you, you turned at the right place and you were looking at the right buildings would have been really tricky. Yeah, one of the biggest things that like we talked about all through like all through like training and stuff was picking the right intersection yeah in the right way through and the right intersection was there any particular way that you did that like what was the best way to pick the right um, intersection the best way was monuments and towers and water features and they were so so good at like if you if you had one of those in your intersection like uh, like 10 for the relay day I used that one there it was so so handy to like pick the right one after seeing that yeah you mean this yeah 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 it was really handy to just pick the right one otherwise you had to kind of like look at the shapes of the buildings and yeah like check yeah it. but if you had one of those big monuments it was like what about the trees the trees yeah i think it was something that we talked about using and then i failed to really look at them but they yeah, were less you had, obvious if you're paying attention, then they were really, really helpful. Yeah, okay. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And anything else about and this course? Was, um, that 15, that was hell. That was my idea of not a fun day out. That was, yeah, you see my trail slow to a, to a, yeah. yeah. It, was it was nice so and hard. healing. What's, um, was so you might be able to, give us information what what was going on with this control i don't know if any of you made this mistake but i saw lots and lots and lots of people miss this control what was going on with yeah. it well because where the track bends and the track goes straight it was not it was not um it was not obvious where the, that the track bended so i think people just kept going straight but um, I was there were like a couple of boys in front of me so I was able to like see that but if you didn't have those couple of boys in front of you and you were so so tired from going up the hill it would have been really hard so you're work. saying this bend wasn't very obvious here. yeah yeah it just yeah. like looking at the control I was like it looks so easy and we've got yeah. like it just it just looked cra it, there was some, something must have been wrong there for that many people like not wrong but something with the interpretation of the yeah. map, I felt had to be wrong with the amount of people that were making mistakes on it doesn't yeah. like it doesn't look difficult from when I'm sitting at home looking at the computer. But um obviously there was something going on there a bit weird. I think that then not being that obvious combined with a really tired brain. Yeah, yeah that okay. That yeah. Yeah. Was like a recipe Earlier for like just missing it. Yeah. That's really interesting. As well, yeah. Was and then the and chip on home so that was Oh, I think Michaela's talking, but I can't hear her. You're just quiet, Michaela. Is, it, is that better? Yeah, that's better. Are you back? Okay, yeah. Some people also thought this um, ride, this uh, passable wall was a ride because it's kind of broken. Um, uh, so then just went having eyes up. Earlier runners also couldn't see the bend as clearly as later runners. Um, and as Mickey said, everyone was really tired. So I think mm -hmm. we just kind of all combined Tonight, together. Yeah. A horror yeah, control I think at the start and end made a big difference because I was one of the last starters and from about where that blue water is on the like below the track if you go up onto the track from about there I could actually see the control yeah like uh, I could okay. my eyes up and I saw 16 from about there yeah um, people have been cutting this corner so or something 
yeah. people had gone through. So I, I think definitely being first starter and last starter makes a big difference. Yeah. In that, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Cool. Does anyone have any other questions um, at all in terms of about uh, the sprint individual? Mary's got, I don't know if it's a question or a comment, but it's uh, talked a lot during walk training about looking for what you can see running from a distance yeah. to use as a marker. Yeah, and I think that was probably pretty for, yeah, just from watching. Yeah, and also watching. Things are like opposite things is what we talked about at work so if there's like a door if there's like a gap rather than looking for something that you can see on the other side yeah indicated rather than looking for the gaps and missing them yeah because you can you can see the other side whereas you can't see the gap because you're running on that side yeah no that's really that's really interesting and obviously yeah maybe applicable for for us doing it's applicable in all sprint orienteering but obviously very applicable in these two terrains yeah 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 so erica lost time there as well yeah because, yeah yeah and a fair and erica was did. also an, yeah erica was also an early runner she was the first she australian to go off yeah i think i watched a lot of people make that mistake um from lots of different countries so i i, I don't know if i reckon it was nearly the most common mistake i saw but i, I didn't haven't analyzed it anyway cool all right well thank you Michaela, um, maybe we'll go on to second Michaela <laughs> in the <laughs> sprint relay. So I'm just going to, I'll just stop and reshare. I'm going to share the, so we want sprint relay, B relay, cool, leg one. All right. And Michaela, do you want to see just you or do you want to see some other teams as well? Um, I think we can just put uh, me on because I can tell you which people I was running with anyway. Yeah, cool. Uh, where are we? Uh, I think I was 62 maybe. Gotcha. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. So st- starting off in a mass start, I knew there'd probably be a split on the first control. So I was just pretty wary of that. And you could kind of see the two groups of people going off. Um, so I just made sure to stick to my compass, like hit the top of the bare rock um, and kind of think about this is my only bush orienteering. So I don't want to make a big mistake here before this actual sprint course. Um, and then even to two, this was like a big root choice leg, but because I was in a pack with so many people, I didn't really make the decision. I just kind of went along with the flow checked that it would get through eventually and figured that it was better to um, like stay with people than to do my own route choice at this stage. Um, How did you think? I haven't really run. Yeah. 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 What did you think? Did you reflect on that afterwards? And, and do you think that was a good idea at that point in the course? Yes, because um, the route choice, I think probably was the best one from my split. It was a bit different from the other split though. Yeah. Yeah um it makes um and I mean I did have a look and in my initial glance it was like oh yeah this this is fine and I think it's probably better to be fine than to risk doing my own thing so early in the uh first leg definitely yeah I think that's that's a good good tactic at that point in the leg for sure especially first leg yeah um so this was all good uh going to three was where I first lost sight of kind of the first people because I actually missed one of the really narrow stairways so I go past 13 and then my plan is to come just straight down those stairs but in real life they were like quite narrow and I didn't see them and I think what happened was uh I did like a big loop instead because I wasn't um brave enough to actually stop and look for it and like be convinced that I'm right especially in a relay um, <clears throat> when I could see like other people. So that was where I kind of first let, lost some time uh, because I didn't want to stop and really analyze it. I was just like, oh, like I can get around, I'll go around, even if it did cost me quite a bit of distance. Um, so I think that was a good like j learning for me was it's okay to stop, um, mm. but it's easier to say that than to do it in a course. And I, don't think I did do it in a course. 
So, <laughs> um, and then off to four, um, I was trying to like catch a couple of people in front. So I missed this little gap right about now that goes via 10. Um, so again, a small mistake, not as big of a deal, but I just kind of wanted to keep running. And by now I could still see a couple of people from now until the end, I was running with about four teams. So there was Netherlands, New Zealand, myself and Austria. Um, so that was really good to run with people uh, for most of the way and like have someone, you know, 10 meters in front um, leading you into controls and stuff like that, which was another advantage of being first runner. Uh, for five, we had to come up across this bare rock which was quite tough going if you have a look at all those contours. Um, and I feel like if I had done maybe more hill training, that could be an area where I made time rather than just tried to avoid losing time. Um, and then, we've, I mean, we've got a couple more tricky legs before we come back. But at this, at this stage in overall, I was like reasonably happy with my position. I was obviously not with like the Swedish people at the very start, but I was with a group of other people. Um, so when I came back, like my second leg runner could go out at least with some people. Um, <clears throat> so it was, it was an all right position, I think. Yeah, nice. Good. Cool. Um, unfortunately, the New Zealand girl that I was running with um, had a different split than me on one of the later splits and she did miss punch. So I also made sure to check my numbers because it was a relay, which cost me time. But I think for myself being not as confident in a relay, um, was worth it in the end. Yeah, it's possibly a good talking point. Do you always check numbers in a race or a relay or mm. what's your approach? Um, my default is to check except if I'm like quite sure of it in sprints, but that is something that I'm working on changing because I think that um, it does take like unnecessary time and brain power to check it. So in the future, like, like I want to check less and less in sprints unless I've just made a mistake or I'm not really sure where I am. Um, but I think in relays, I'll, I'll probably keep checking, checking for now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. No, it's always an interesting talk. There's no wrong or right for that, and it's it's interesting to see different people approaching it different ways. And I think what you said there is a very sort of sensible way to approach it in terms of, um, so, <clears throat> sorry, in terms of um, I'm blanked out. There we go. There's the COVID coming in. <laughs> um, I don't even know what I was talking about now. My cut that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about control numbers. Sorry, very sensible way of doing it. Um, being when you're unsure, checking. If you're one hundred percent sure, then obviously it's less important. But some people would still say that you should do it then. So um, I think the way you've approached it sort of uh, makes a lot of sense. All right. Um, anything else in in the course or any other particular things like later on? Do you want to? Should we keep playing it through? Um. Um, we can zoom through it. It's pretty standard. I don't think, think I took the ideal route to 10, but again, I was uh, with people, so I wasn't really that unhappy about it. I probably could yeah. have been more aggressive in circumstances like this, um, like tried to uh, get ahead of the other girls I was running with by taking a different route um, and maybe like in future realize that's something I'll do, especially now we're at the end of the like later half of the course. Um, I could have taken some aggressive route choices to get ahead. Whereas at the moment I, I was kind of content with staying with the people I was running with. Um, so yeah. that's also something I can work on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it was obviously like a really tricky course and looks like you've you've done really well. Um, and obviously that is your first sprint relay where you're running first, you said? Yeah. Yeah, cool. So good training for future years. Is it something you'd like to do again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I reckon. I, I quite enjoyed it. You liked it? Yeah, cool. Awesome. 
All right. Does anyone have any other questions for Michaela while we've got her here? Um, Mary's posted a couple of things. I'm not sure if it's in from the previous bit or from now. Um, she was just talking think, about this. I think one of them was related. Yeah, like stopping to check your map to look at like little like stairs behind walls and uh, that sort of thing for me. Like I didn't want to stop, but she's right that it is quite different to Australia. You don't need to stop as much in Australia because like nothing's really hidden from your view as you're running into it, but it's a lot more tight and tricky in places like this. Um, so you might need to like change the mindset a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's something that I've probably seen more this year. Um, I don't know if anyone was watching the World Cup. Uh, I mean, sorry, the World Games coverage, but uh, there was multiple times in that course where people were like stopped still. Like Tim Robertson, when he won the sprint and on a major route choice, he stops for like a good um, second. And I think we've had maybe that was a good reflection for me as well, being some this sort of thing of must maintain flow must maintain flow must maintain flow um is not always the most important part um in certain in certain races so i think that was a, that's a good reflection and obviously something that happened at walk as well as was happening at jaywalk um oh yes sorry mary's asking if the the sprint i don't know if you're a you, you were saying you like sprint, but I don't know if you consider yourself a sprint orienteer or like a mainly sprinter. But uh, let's uh, is it is this something you'd like to sort of keep pursuing and, and doing sprints and, and aim for maybe sprint walk in the future? Yeah, I think so. I think um, having more sprint races, the null season this year, we did a lot of sprints and like the knockouts were super fun. I think it definitely has motivated me to uh, like focus on sprints um like every now and then like in two years for example focus on sprints and like what would be a really cool end goal but even um getting better at sprints in general I think has been good also the a sprint relay has been added to the jaywalk uh like program in I think all future jaywalks instead oh, really? of the middle qualifier or at least mm. for next year I'm not sure about all future interesting it's be a sprint, been... uh, the... sprint relay instead of a middle quad yeah so j is also reflecting like a bit more of an emphasis on sprints so like yeah. yes it is becoming more more prominent i would think and sprint walk is like a really good end goal that's cool Jules, yeah they've been, they've been talking about that for a, a little while bringing it in and maybe this was the stimulus that was needed to to finally secure it so yeah really interesting and i, I think it was quite a successful look like a successful discipline this year so that's exciting. Cool. Um, any other questions for Michaela from anyone? We can, if there's any that pop up, we can answer them at the end as well. Let's move on to Julia. I will stop this and reshare again because it's easier. And we're looking at leg one, aren't we, Julia? Yeah. Cool. All righty. So where was this map to start with? Because I didn't ever actually sort of look. Was it in the same area? Like, does it the parallel so it, to the other one? It wasn't really parallel. Close, like totally just, different area. Yeah, it was a model map that everyone had allegedly run on, so it was fair and it was like it was one that they encouraged everyone to run on. So it was like yeah, that. so they thought it okay because it was the most relevant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Had you guys run on it? Yeah, so this is the one we did the sprint simulation with the key. Ah, cool. Off. Cool. Yeah. All right. Do you want just you, you and a few other teams, you and all the teams? Um, I think that's Mickey. I'm so you that's... versus 1v1. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm red. Mickey um, C is purple. We actually you want just you. Purple. Oh no, Mickey! Mickey! Mickey can come along. Okay. We were actually quite close the whole way oh. along, which was actually quite nice. Yeah, yeah, I was greeted around every corner with a little "Go <laughs> from Julia, which yeah. was which was very lovely and heartwarming. But <laughs> even when I tried to go back, I was like, "Go, Julia!" <laughs> I was a bit tired. 
Um, but from the start, it was really cool because all of the team followed this tape around and everybody went left and we all just ran along this cobblestone and there was so many of us and it was actually quite, quite awesome, quite surreal to have just like so many girls just running along this cobbled street. Yeah. And it really much, looked yeah. so cool from a drive. It yeah. really looked so cool. And everyone yeah, yeah, everyone <laughs> coming across. Um, and then this is where Mickey and I first split. Um, but then we, yeah, saw each other as we went back into the building. Um, as And it was quite hectic coming through here, um, touching that and turning around. There were so many girls. Um, <laughs> we honestly stuck together a lot of the time. Um, coming through there, there was still so many girls. Um, and I think that was one of the things that was different for me. I don't think I've run a first leg before, let alone on such a, you know, worldly stage. And so I think that being in the atmosphere was really cool for me because normally, at least in the relay before, I was fourth leg and on previous ones I think I've always been last so I'm normally out there by myself you know occasionally see someone going the other direction but never people going to the same controls as you so having everyone um, kind of going the same direction minus a couple of like splitting um, I think it was really cool and it definitely pulled me along um, I felt more confident going the way I wanted to go um, and I guess there is also that negative like maybe someone will pull you in the wrong direction um, or you just follow and then when they turn really quickly, you don't know where you are. But I think definitely it was good for me. I felt like more confident and, yeah, I liked how everyone pulled, pulled me along, which was good. Yeah, cool. Did you find that you were able to sort of manage the, obviously the difference in terms of having never done it before? How did you feel like you managed it? Yeah, I think I actually really enjoyed it. I think I, think I did well because I think, I knew that I had to stay in contact with the map and that if I was getting pulled along, I had to stop. Um, but yeah, I think I, I think I did that quite well. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Good. It looked so like coming, fun. Yeah. It was lots of fun. Yeah. So coming around here, Mickey and I, yeah, I can always see the tail of Mickey and um, yeah, coming around. There was lots of people, especially coming to number seven, getting onto this little boardwalk. There was not much space. And I think we saw a girl almost all over the edge as we ran past. Um, that was a bit sketchy coming up there. Isn't that technically illegal? Like, Yeah, it is, but they had like a board. Yeah, they had like a board yeah, sketchy. Okay. Did they show it on your map that it was legal to do it? Because like, it's strange that they're... Did not even look to it. Everyone look. was going in there with tapes. <laughs> you just like, went. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah, and they told us the night before, like um, when mm. uh, Brett and Warren came back from the meeting, they said that that's what that yeah, was. There was, was a section. That, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, interesting. Yeah, cool. Um, and I, I guess the one thing that was probably quite different to this sprint race that you wouldn't, have maybe done in the past it would have been quite long is that right was it the same courses for the boys and, and the girls yeah that same and the boys started before us so they were in less sun and less time and then yeah. we started an hour later in the hotter sun and obviously yeah. take longer and theirs so, was already a bit longer as well i think like it was like the fastest times would have been around 16 i think maybe or maybe it was a yeah. little bit quicker yeah so, so how long were you guys out for? We were 22. So quite a long time. Yeah. So this is the section that both Mickey and I stuffed up. Yeah. So we just came in and I guess we saw the opening. Um, and I guess this is an example of where people pull you along. So Mickey went all the way in and I kind of stopped as... I got to the um, olive green and I was really confused because I was like, it says it's paved and we're like dropping down into bush. Um, and as you can see, that's where I kind of, I lose Mickey for a section there. Oh yeah. Um, Cause I come back out and then she's stuck behind everyone wanting to come through, but then I make a questionable route choice to my, so I didn't have F I had E 
I don't know what I was doing there. <laughs> but, and then, yeah, she kind of caught me up there again. So I didn't, didn't get away from her. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, heading to my number 12, I think I, with sprinting, long legs, a lot of the time I see a route choice and I'm like, no, I've just got to be confident. I've, I've made my route choice. I can't hesitate. Um, and sometimes that pays off because there's no hesitation and I just go whether it's the best route choice or not. And other times it's not the best route choice, but I've committed and I go anyway when I should have turned around. Um, so these ones, I guess, were kind of comparable, but I still think going above may have been better because I do a little ziggity zag there. Yeah. Yeah. So Julia's course had like an extra control. So she went to that one on the bare rock that she see and another one, whereas my course, I just had the H. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, so it's she, quite messy in yeah. there between us. And who, you guys were here at the same time or Julia was a little bit ahead? Yeah, yeah Julia was a little, a little bit, bit ahead. ahead. Yeah. And okay. as we got. Yeah. Yeah. And then you pretty much were at the control at the same time the same time yeah 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 okay um so take away from that in terms of like long route choices uh like like that strategy of taking like once you've chosen a route choice committing to it when do you think you won't use that in the future i think definitely on the trainings that we've done i've gotten better at doing a double check so mm -hmm. looking seeing the best route choice not committing, having a double check and then going, no, it is the right choice and then committing. So there's still a bit of hesitation, but it's a good hesitation. It's a checking hesitation. I feel like what I used to do was I'd, I'd bounce between two. I'd start running one direction for like 10 metres and go, no, no, the other one's better. Start running that way for 10 metres. No, 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 the other way is better. And then run back the first way. Yeah. I went, you know, 20 metres each way is not. And is, not it, is there like a certain type of leg or a certain length of leg that, you think that it's more more important for you to sort of double check definitely longer legs um obviously you know that the further like if you're one degree off at the start the longer the leg the longer you'll yeah. be away from when yeah. you get to the end so obviously longer legs you want to make sure you have the better route choice and that's where stopping and making the best route choice when you start is a good i think a good choice because two seconds at the start of the leg compared to, you know, 10 seconds at the end is a time saver. So definitely longer legs. I'm getting better at stopping and making the best route choice and then committing. Um, so, yeah. 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 My route choice selection was purely based on, I saw that there was a lot of hill if I went down here. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, a lot I, of extra climb. Yeah, yeah. I like to avoid hills at all costs. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, then we, we set the band was back together again. Yeah, yeah, back together. And this is where all the collisions were, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 this is where Jensen almost hit the turf. Um, that was a very sketchy choice. Of, um, yeah. That obviously, that, that's probably part of planning late notice, I reckon, that they didn't pick up on that being an issue. Yeah. Because um, I guess that was 16 to 17 for Zephyr. And he just saw a straight line. Yeah. And I, I, and I turned around and went back in. Yeah. Um, through. So yeah. And a lot of the a lot of the best teams were like, I don't know which way was the best route choice, but um a lot of the best teams or a lot of good runners were still running this way and, and it wasn't necessarily a mistake. I don't know if I think what that the best route choice quicker was that, was that yeah. little zag back up. I exactly. think was, yeah, yeah, was the best best route choice. Like maybe best on paper, but then I still don't know if it's better on that than the actual day anyway. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, cool. Yeah. You guys didn't run into anyone? No. Did you finish <laughs> we together won. as well? Is that start to finish yeah, three together? three seconds apart, I think. Who yeah. won? Mickey. Mickey. Yeah. yeah. Just. 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 Three seconds in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we were running with. Like, it didn't feel like we were running with people, but then I, like, looked back and we were actually running with, like, yeah. we were in front of both the Great Britain teams, both the New Zealand mm. teams. We, went, we, we were, were doing <laughs> well. <laughs> we were quite the team, yeah. 
this is a lot of teams. Yeah. <laughs> now I've lost track of you. Oh, you're up here. Yeah. Yeah, there's Great Britain. They're still going yeah, that way. So... Yeah, it's good. Yeah. What well, is it about midfield, is it, roughly? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Long course, spread it out a lot. It, it didn't spread out that much given well. out how long it was. Yeah, it was having well. the spectator run through to purely just go back all the way yeah. down into the town was <laughs> yeah. like that hurt. Yeah. Really? yeah, I thought that was pretty yeah. rough. Yeah. Um but yeah, the spectator run through was hard hard work. Yeah. So like especially if it's you came up on that track and then you went back down on that track. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. But cool. we did it. it. It felt like a couple hundred meters too long. Yeah, but by yeah. the end, it was so hot. It was yeah. so hot. Yeah. Geez, I'd yeah. be wanting some of that at the moment, to be honest. <laughs> it's just all perspective, isn't it? I'm like, I wish I was in the heat, and as soon as I was there, I'd be like, nope, I don't want that. <laughs> that was very, very narrow. Hey, Tash. What were you saying? <laughs> oh, hi. I was just saying. So I've got. I think we've got quite bad internet internet connection. But that little track that they the girls are talking about on the long route to choice, the little track through the green. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah. No, no, no. The on the route choice one that yeah, you were talking about seven earlier. Seven to eight. Oh yeah, the, the other the little, one. Yeah. The little. Yeah. yeah. That running that in, in the coaches race after that was tiny, so narrow, and when you had two way traffic. It was, uh, you know, it was really a bit scary, and I think there were a couple of accidents where, you know, people got bumped, bumped into the, you know, the stone wall when they were running. Maybe it seemed narrower than it was tough after a shoey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was in the um? No. What was this olive green area? It was, it was just, just field, like, like a, uh, yeah, like an orchard. Okay. Yeah, there was right. a stone wall with a height either side and it was very narrow. So having yeah, people yeah, running yeah. both ways quite fun. But control placements like number 18 where Jensen had that, uh, you know, yeah. specky crap was, um, I think, just last minute planning and yeah, yeah. and they just, they just. It was all a bit tight there. Worried about putting it sort of to think about that. All they had to do was pull the control a couple of metres away from the corner and it would have been fine. Yeah, they probably should have put it on this side. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway. But it was still good. But, gee, it was hot. These guys did so well to get around that. It was so hot. Yeah, it didn't And, uh, you know, there wasn't a coming through the spectator. So, um, you know, they did amazing. Yeah, no, it was really good to watch. All right. Um, does anyone have any other questions either about this race or just generally for the girls? Feel free to shout them out now. Um, or yeah, you can I have. <laughs> surprise, Go surprise. for it, Mary. You're my favourite <laughs> question master. Yeah, I've taken up a lot of airspace today, haven't I? Yeah. Um, yeah. So what I, I just had a question. Maybe you didn't even think about this, but like, what did you, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. What did you think about the fact that everyone had already run on the map? Because that has been like a really contentious um, thing over the past couple of years, like particularly with sprint, all of the geeking that people are doing and the, mm. the ability to produce maps. And like, it was really interesting in Denmark that they made a lot of the kind of mapping um, data available by the website to try and make it as fair as possible for everyone. Um, so obviously this is becoming more and more of a, a contentious issue in elite orienteering. So did you have any thoughts about whether it was fair that all the teams had had an opportunity to run on that map already? Or, I mean, obviously this is an exception because it was a last minute thrown together race, um, but it's just interesting to hear. Yeah, I think it was, it felt better for us because we're like oh, we've run on it before <laughs> so like at, at least we've done it and um I think if we hadn't run on it before it would have it would have felt really a bit unfair like particularly those bits at the end were our first couple controls in the um 
in our um, sim screen. Yeah. So this is where we had yeah, our sim screen. Um, and, but they opened up areas that they didn't have before. Like the first, con the first two controls were in like an old people's home. And when we were running like through the middle of the old people's home, there were like people on the edges, like cheering us mm -hmm. on. It was really cute. Um, but I think, I didn't really think about it that people had run on it before. I kind of was just like, well, we, we our only, we've got to beat the New Zealanders anyway. So they're our competition and they've mm -hmm. run it at the same time as us. So <laughs> Um, Did you hear yeah. of many teams that hadn't had an opportunity to run on it or like hadn't chosen to or had pretty much everyone? I hadn't heard of anyone yeah. that hadn't run on it, no. but they well could have the been. The Finns hadn't, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. The Finns? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's interesting, I guess, because like definitely if that was Wok, there's no way you'd be able to use that race if the fins hadn't run on it. And everyone yeah. else had. And I guess that's why uh, they no, I was chatting with I was chatting with one of the Finnish guys and he said he hadn't run on it. But um yeah. 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 And I guess that's yeah, why they made it unofficial because they couldn't make it like, fair. Yeah. Um but still wanted to give us a race. And I feel like that's what it came down to. It was either have two official races and go home or have three. And I think everyone was on the same consensus that we'd prefer to have another race and we'd just run and, and just run. It and, still felt yeah. official. It yeah. felt like Jaywalk. It felt with all of the GPS and the, yeah. and the, the arena and, arena, the production and did you and feel and more yeah. confident running on that? race because you had already been on the map like did that make a really big difference yeah. to your ability to run that race I think so like for me like particularly at the end I was kind of not thinking of running and maybe I didn't make the best route choice mm -hmm. even so it might not have even like helped me specifically but at the end where I was like oh I know this I know this place I, I know it um it did make me feel a bit more confident and I definitely wasn't as nervous for this race as but any of the other ones and yeah, I think, and I've run first leg and I never, ever run first leg. It was very, it was a different experience. And I think that's what Tasha Warren tried to do. They tried to put us in legs that we didn't really do because it was kind of unofficial and it was an opportunity for us to go and do different things yeah. that we wouldn't usually do. Yeah. So it sounds like it's probably worth like Australia as a squad trying to, trying to like think about how we can really simulate what you might be doing in a race to to try and take away some of those nerves before before the race but i'm sure yeah. there was a lot more to it as well like knowing that it was unofficial and it was the last race of the week and you know other yeah. stuff that that probably made you feel more relaxed as well yeah so are any of Mary, you, a little bit anyone who's going to come back for the forest races at the end of the year uh, I would love to, but I'm so figuring out if I can. Yeah, they've put it right on, um, like, when our exams are for uni. And, um, again, it is a lot of money to be able to come back over here for a couple of days. And it'll probably be, like, really cold or something, so they'll probably cancel it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I feel like it would be an amazing opportunity because... The maps here on the like small amount of time that we did get to run on the bush maps, they were so cool. Yeah, and, they were really awesome. Yeah, I think we had so much fun. But cool. yeah, but it depends. I think on they were also the some of the closer terrain that Europe has to offer to what Australia has as well. Yeah, yeah. Warren kept saying oh, we could be in Stanthorpe right now, and then we'd go somewhere else. And, oh, this is exactly like South Australia. So yeah. he was he was making the connections left, right and centre. So yeah. So I think everyone in the team would love to come back, but it's yeah. just a matter of I don't think we can quite swing it with uni. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and money. money and everyone has a different reason that might yeah. stop them from going. So yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> just on that, how were uh... How different was the terrain from, say, a Stanthorpe or something like that? Like, was it the same, or was it actually like I know the maps look similar, but did it did it have a different feel, or 
or was it really actually just really similar? It was, it was quite, quite similar. similar. Yeah. One of the biggest differences was the green. Um, you just could not get through any green from like kind of the middle shades to the darkest shades. Even light green was a struggle, where, whereas in Australia, like you just have to get through green um, sometimes. <laughs> so you had to like make root, yeah, to make root choices to avoid the green, which was um, different than Australia. Um, but the actual like bare rock slabs and rocks and stuff felt quite similar. Brody, I think it was quite like just uh, near the new map in Victoria is at Mount Egbert, um, Egmont, something just north of uh, Bendigo. That, oh, yeah. It had that sort of feel. Yeah. So pro probably a good uh, area to come and train on for anyone that's sort of closer to this part of the world rather than stands on. Yeah, and anyone that is planning on going, that would be the other thing. I guess none of it, I was going to ask how you would... Uh, prepare it's a unique opportunity i think for an australian at jaywalk to have visited the terrain so far out from the competition if if someone does go not saying that any pressure on anyone to go but yeah it's it's quite unique in that in that way we we i know we were trying to do that for portugal in 2020 when it yeah, was yeah. supposed to be yeah 21 me and dante i think we're gonna go and get into the terrain but yeah it's it's interesting uh, that it could actually happen this year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right, Brody. It actually, that, that feeling of um, having been there, and sorry, there's a tractor about to go past out the front door. Um, that feeling that we've actually been there and done some training, this is what other countries have got. It from, uh, this is what other countries must feel like, you know, when uh, they've been there, they've done a week of training. Before yeah. the actual, yeah, before the actual Jaywalk week itself. So, if people could go back, I think it would be, a, you know, a really great opportunity. And the terrain really did feel like um, it was familiar familiar to us, which is also unusual. So, yeah, yeah I I bumbled around a um, training camp there in early 2020 in a similar area, and. It reminded me a lot of Kiura, actually, some of the maps. Mm. Just like a lot of that sparse, rocky stuff between loads of green shit. Yeah, yeah. And probably... Super cool too. Worth considering for um, future years. I know this year, obviously, there's so many events on in Europe and it's hard to plan for next year. Um, and we're all sort of getting back over there for the first time, but maybe in future years the jaywalk people who are over there that are going to be the eligible the next year maybe being proactive and, and getting into that terrain might be yeah Michaela's going to be a couple of years maybe it's something you think about next year Michaela um, and others into the future I think I'm not sure anyone's ever done it for jaywalk that well but I think it's happened a few times and, and one of them probably would have been Aston I imagine I think may have got into the Danish terrain before the year but um yeah so it can be useful obviously cool any <laughs> other questions from anyone before we let these guys go and enjoy their European holiday no but sorry uh, sorry we were late joining and then we've got really Bad internet connection, but yeah, thanks very much, Brody, for doing this, and thanks to the girls for jumping on and sharing your experience. It was a fun week, um, you know, even with that the unfortunate bushfires. So I think you guys managed, you know, very well to uh, just keep pushing on through that disappointment. Awesome, yeah. Thank you, Tash, for Tash and Warren for being there to help them through it. I'm sure there's. Um, I'm, I'm sure you, you did a lot of work in, in, in that week and, and were really helpful in making sure they all had a, a, a very good week in the end, all things considered. Um, so, yeah, thanks again. I'll repeat what Tash said coming along. That's great. I think this is really useful for anyone who's wanting to go to Jaywalk in future years to have a listen. I know it's not our standard Jaywalk, but just some of the experiences and some of the takeaways you guys had, I think, are really useful. 
Um, so we'll upload it. So if anyone misses it, uh, they can see it. So if you're talking to anyone and they, they want to listen, it should be up on the YouTube account in a couple of days. But um, thank you to Michaela, Michaela and Julia. Thanks, Brody. Thanks, Brody.